this is Selma Schimmel and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here and so is The Group Room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Anil Sood, Professor of Gynecologic Oncology at the UTMD Anderson Cancer Center. Welcome. Thank you. Dr. Sood, what are some of the maybe exciting breakthroughs then based on this? I think a very exciting study will be presented at this meeting, which is that conventionally what we've done uh, in the past for treatment of ovarian cancer is that if we use an antiangiogenesis drug such as bevacizumab, we know that its main role seems to be um, if you continue the drug after the chemotherapy has been completed, not just combining it with chemotherapy, but also continuing it for extended period of time. Historically, those, uh, that drug was stopped after a limited number of cycles. It, it was used for 12 to 15 months after the initial chemotherapy-based treatment was completed. At this year's meeting, a drug called Pasopnib uh, was studied in a comparative uh, trial where it was continued for uh, up to a two-year time period. Well, it turns out that patients who received it on an ongoing basis seem to have a, a much better, uh, what we call uh, progression-free survival. Now, if that kind of a finding continues to hold, that would be an important finding because it's telling us that continuation therapies can play a very important role in improving the outcome of patients with uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, obviously, more work needs to be done, but that, that is certainly a very important finding. And you mentioned Avastin a few minutes ago. Um, I've read that you're also using that in combination with metronomic mm -hmm. therapy like um, uh, cyclophosphamus, cytoxin. Um, is the idea of metronomic therapy, low-dose therapy that women can take orally every day, is that proving to be at all old drug, but a more innovative way of using it? Uh, it's clearly an innovative way of using it. Uh, the exact place for combining it with metronomic therapies, we're still learning about that. And their cyclophosphamide, one of the drugs you mentioned, is clearly an important metronomic drug. There are also uh, other medications such as topotecan that also seem to have metronomic activity. Those are all things that are being studied at this point and how to best combine those with other biologically active drugs. We were not able to be at the Society of Gynecologic Oncology meeting, but I know you were at the SGO meeting. And there was some news uh, relating to cervical cancer. Maybe we can take a minute about that. Sure. So for cervical cancer, um, we just didn't know whether use of an anti-angiogenesis drug or a drug that can block the blood supply to cancers would have uh, any relevance in terms of improving outcome and so on. And some even worried that if you were to reduce the blood supply, would you actually compromise the effectiveness of chemotherapy or radiation therapy and so on. Well, the data are now finally starting to come out that use of an anti-angiogenesis drug actually does seem to provide benefit for patients with cervical cancer. Again, that's a very important finding, and we look forward to seeing additional data come out in that arena. So, closing thoughts from you uh, before we end our, our time together, whatever they may be, and also just stressing the importance for some of these challenging gynecologic cancers that there is hope and excitement as we identify these pathways. Well, closing words, I would say that diseases like ovarian cancer remain deadly, but we've, one of the key findings is that it's not a single disease. It's a very heterogeneous disease, but we're now starting to learn about what are the key subgroupings of this disease that offer opportunities for therapeutic targeting in a much more effective way than we could have done 10 years ago. And the second thing is that there's absolutely hope now in terms of new therapies or new treatments coming about that are truly making an impact on patient outcome. So it's a very exciting and a very different time because it couples the omics findings, be it genomics or protein or metabolomics, and it combines that with a, a, a new set of drugs that tend to be effective 
and we're learning how to use them in, the, uh, in a group of patients who are the most likely to benefit from those drugs. Thank you for spending inspiring time with us, Dr. Amil Sood from the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Thank you.